Greetings YouTube! I have never done a video on any of the Metal Gear games. Not a one. They all, apart from the one that will not be named, all of them that matter, came out before I started my channel. I always meant to go back and do this. I tried one time to do Metal Gear Solid 5. But I was trying to do a perfect stealthy run and I kind of cocked it up. So it threw the whole video off. This time though, I am safe from that kind of thing. I have pre-recorded all the footage. I'm cheating. So I can't cock the run up. Now, I wanted to go back and have a look at this game. Because in my opinion, Metal Gear Solid 5 is the best one they ever made. And it's because of the sheer amount of flexibility involved. You can approach a situation not only strategically, but literally from any direction you want. I always like that. That's the kind of thing I like about open world games. You can wander hither and thither or wherever you please. Now, the mission I've picked to demonstrate is mission three. And that's because it, the game says it's a village. It's actually more of a farm. It's got very few buildings in it. It's nice and open and you start, if you choose that particular direction, you start from a high vantage point, you can see everything, so you can get a feel for it. Um, I've done five runs and I'm gonna try and fly through them as quickly as possible and I've done a slightly different, slightly different approach with each one just to demonstrate how flexible the game system is. So, here we go. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna use exactly the same loadout for all five runs, so don't worry about that. I've got a standard assault rifle, I've got the sniper rifle, I've got the sleepy pistol, or whatever the hell, the tranquilizer gun, whatever. I've got the arm, I've got a handful of other stuff, but it, nothing fancy. I'm just going in this with basic stuff. This is something I always like, you have to enter the AO by helicopter and you can choose where to drop even though it's a free roaming game. I always liked this little thing. And... <laughs> Um, by the way, I just uh, face planted into the ground there and uh, you might notice a few things like this uh, in the first two runs because I'm not quite sure what the controls are. I can't, you can see me testing out the controls. It's been a while. So I thought X would get on horse. It's triangle, which is why he just went boom, boom, on the ground. I pressed the wrong button. Right, so hopefully having sorted out what's what, no, I haven't quite. I'm trying to find the scope now, and I can't. Here we go. I'm trying every button. There we go. Right, so you can see the enemies in the distance. You can tag them, and once they're tagged, you don't lose sight of them unless you go miles away. Now, this mission three requires me to kill, or should I say eliminate, the guy in the hat. Which is, I've just put a marker on him there. So now I'm going to take the sniper rifle and eliminate him. I say eliminate because that's how the game phrased it. Killing him is one option. I always try for a headshot here and I always miss. Every single time. I haven't got the... Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's the sniper rifle being inaccurate but after the first two shots I think screw it. I'm just gonna shoot him wherever. Two body shots and he's dead. And there he is. He's down. I don't even have to enter the area. They've only just become aware that they're under attack properly, I mean, they weren't quite sure. Get on the horse, ride back to the extraction zone. This is the quickest and easiest way to do this mission. Just shoot him from a distance. Now, historically in Metal Gear, you're supposed to stealth and sneak your way through these games. But obviously, the games have become a bit more, um, less stealth and more action orientated as time has gone by. I mean, Metal Gear Solid 4 was the first game that allows you to point the camera in any direction, which was a fucking revelation for me because I didn't realize Metal Gear knew how to point the camera in any other direction except down. That was one of my bugbears. The overly long cutscenes were another one, by the way, but I shot the guy. I killed him with two or four shots and I still got an S rank. Normally in the other games, if you kill a single enemy, you don't get an S. It stops you from doing it. But this game can stop you from getting an S rank, but you have to do things like call in the support helicopter to lay down fire and, and things like that. But yeah, as far as the game's concerned, perfect run, even though it wasn't. Run number two, and this time I decided to go full stealthy. Don't kill anybody. And I decided, that because you have to eliminate the commander one of the ways you can eliminate him is to extract him out of the area non-lethally 
So that's what I'm going to do with this run. And I'm using the binoculars or whatever it's called to mark the enemies ahead of time. Because then their locations will be given away. And you have to move very, very far away before these markers disappear. So they'll stay marked forever now. I don't know how the hell Snake manages this, but he does. Now, I don't know if anyone has this problem as well, but I'm trying to sneaky sneaker some my way towards the base. And it doesn't seem to matter which direction I try, there's always that one sodding enemy. I don't know how he does it. He's always bloody there. I swear it's the same guy and he does it on purpose. It's that guy at the top left hand corner there about 30, just over 30 meters away. I'm thinking to myself right now, if that guy comes along here, I can maybe sneak up there, but there's bad guys up there. So maybe if that guy comes this way and walks off, you know, to the right in the other direction, he doesn't. He walks towards me. I don't, I, this guy is in every sodding Metal Gear game and in every bloody mission I ever play. It's really bloody annoying. Here he comes, the tosser. Every time he walks towards me, it's really annoying. And I'm about to be spot Well, not spotted exactly, but he sort of twigs and I don't know how he sees me. But I just put him to sleep with the tranquilizer gun like that. Pew! Taken out. I probably should have done that before, but I was trying to do it without doing this, you know? Now, I'm inside the central base building here, but... I didn't mark the target, so I, I don't know where he is. Now I'm thinking he's upstairs. I thought he was down here. Uh, I believe I'm correct in saying that a sandstorm is about to blow through. In fact, I think that is the sandstorm right now that I can hear. Yeah. Sandstorms lower the visibility and the level of hearing of the enemy, which means that you can just basically sprint through the damn thing to your target. So, now I've kind of cottoned on that this is a thing. I'm still trying to scavenge metals. I don't know why. It's irrelevant for the mission. But those enemies over there, no chance of seeing me. All I have to do is get in close enough. Yep. There he is. Yep. Thought twice about going in through the other door. Come up behind him. Sneaky Sneakerson. He almost saw me. And that's him. Throttle him into unconsciousness. And then I just have to pick him up. And having tranquilized a couple more of the guards on my way out, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm out and clear across the desert with the guy in the red hat. As I say, you don't have to kill him, you only have to eliminate him. They're going to tell stories about this one, boss. Miller sounded impressed, and he bloody should. I think the only way that could have gone even more perfectly is if I hadn't fired the tranquilizer gun three times. If I hadn't bothered taking out those three guards silently. But tons of bonus points. Often the bonuses are worth more than the regular points. But it's worth mentioning that, you know, tactical takedowns, headshots, accuracy, the number of enemies you've taken out, the various things, it all adds up to your points, which adds to your rank. So unlike previous games that only reward you for stealth and punish you when you do something stupid, this game's got a little bit more leeway. You can do it how you want, and that's what I love about it. And the target is Mark, so this time I can't lose him. Run three. I don't know what my little finger was doing there. And this run, I'm stealthy, but I opt to kill anybody that I come across. Anybody that gets in my way... I kill with a silent headshot with the rifle. Guard up above. So obviously this guy could turn around and spot me. Aim for the head. And down. That guy can't alert anybody anymore. Okay, heading into this other outbuilding to take out this second enemy. They don't look like much, these enemies around the outside, but they can spot you. And I get a bit of a nasty shock when I suddenly realise he's coming down the ladder. Oh shit. Go outside and wait a little bit. And he's walking away from me. So I'm just going to sneak up behind him and grab him and knife him. Because I'm on a lethal run and I don't care anymore. 
Now you can interrogate people once you've got hold of them, but these guys speak Russian and at this point in the game, I haven't got the Russian translator, so I can't tell what they're saying anyway. I've no idea what they said because again Russian, but it sounded urgent. I'm going to assume they found a body because all the patrols suddenly go, there you go, entering alert status. So one of the, that's one of the drawbacks of actually killing the enemy soldiers. It leaves a body behind. And obviously I made no attempt to hide them. One of them just saw me through the window. I've got a silent rifle and that just transpired to be the target. It's a silent rifle, but I just shot out the glass and the glass breaking gives me away. So I move away, I get down on the ground so that guy can't see me from a distance because now they're on alert, which means they can see you from further away. Normally the enemies do what they did in the old games, they sort of wander around looking at the floor, but they don't really pay any attention. Another enemy in my way. Oh, first shot went over his head, second shot landed. But no one knows that that happened, totally silent. Completely silent, no actual combat alerts, but it wasn't perfect stealth, so I lost that massive bonus there. Lost a few other things for no kills, no reflex of course, when, uh, when the commander saw me it engaged reflex mode, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. You get smatterings of points for all sorts of things, but you do get a lower rank overall because that was a bit messy. It was messier than I was intending, but the game still encourages you to do the full stealth thing. You know what I mean? It's just not necessary anymore. Now, enemy checkpoints often have these, uh, like, they look like satellite dishes, but they're actually communication systems. And I'm just going to attach a C4 charge. There we go. And so now I can blow that up whenever I like, which you might be tempted to do if you're a complete newcomer, but there's three of these. If you want to sever their communications, you're going to have to blow up all three, which I, d I do here. I rig all three of them and I blow all of them up together, but it takes time. But once the comm equipment is destroyed, they can't call reinforcements. So if you cock up, there's only the guards on site to deal with. And hopefully, if you've spotted everybody, you know how many there are. And kablooey. Now they can't call reinforcements. Although they obviously have been alerted by the explosion. This is where I went a little bit nuts with the Fulton recovery system. The, the Fulton recovery system is basically, if you don't know, you knock someone out, you attach a balloon to them, they fly high into the air, and then that was reflex there uh, and they fly high into the air where a, an aircraft captures them and they get taken back to your base and you get a new recruit now this is this is a little bit stupid of the enemy um, because I've just knocked out one of them and now another one's coming running to investigate guess what I'm gonna do I'm gonna knock him out and he's now there run towards him reflex but it doesn't matter I, I tried to manhandle him a bit early there but it doesn't matter and here we go Fulton recovery is not guaranteed it's at 90 percent so there's a chance that they could die through the sheer shock of being airlifted into the sky by a high-powered helium balloon but odds are they'll arrive on time headshot Touch a balloon, and away he goes into the sky. Whee! It's always funny to watch that. Oh, and it said extraction failed there, by the way. So there's your 10% failure right, right there. That guy didn't make it. Oops. Does that count as a kill on my statistics? I'll have to check that when the mission ends. It says no kills. So it was the support team that killed him. Anyway, uh, I extracted the guy instead on that one. No kills. And I still got a rank B. Same rank as 
as the mission where I shot some people. So it, it doesn't really matter if you make kills, because if you make headshots, they count, they count as tactical takedowns, which means you've been a smart ass, or a little bit more smart than just filling them full of bullets, at least. Fifth and final run, and on this one I just go full lethal. And I even take the suppressor off my rifle. So, no hiding. Well, I say no hiding, I do do a little bit of that. But, that gunshot has been heard. And that triggered Reflex. And by the way, I've mentioned Reflex uh, more than once. Reflex is a mode which you can disable. But, what it basically means is that if an enemy spots you... The game goes into super slow motion. It gives you a warning indicator as to where the enemy is that spotted you. And if you take aim at them, Snake will auto-aim at their head. Meaning, you can insta-kill them. And I actually do this a few times in a row in this section. There we go. Another reflex from the guy in the tower. Maybe he's out of range for the auto-targeting. There's an enemy in front of me. Oh, reflex. Auto-aim. Oh, my mistake. It auto-aims at the body. Another reflex. Aim at the head, sort of. Another headshot. Reflex makes it way too goddamn easy. And another one. And there goes another one. By the way, I'm not setting off an alarm. I mean, they're alerted, but I haven't set off a full-blown combat alert yet. It's ridiculous. Now, this guy is in an awkward place. I couldn't quite shoot him because this, this barricade was in the way. So now the alarm has properly gone off. Now we're into full-blown combat. Oh, dear. Yeah, I got flanked from the side. Die! And you can see that I'm starting to take damage. No health bar, of course. Just the traditional redding out of the screen. Again, I'm not standing in one place for too long. Or trying not to, anyway. Getting shot to pieces. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, where are the reinforcements? Well, on one of the previous runs, I blew up the communications equipment. And once you've blown it up, it stays blown up for a while. So they're not able to call in extra forces to back them up. All they have is the soldiers on site. In hindsight, to make this harder, I probably shouldn't have blown up the communications equipment first. But, okay. By the way, I do spend quite a bit of time wandering around here, not knowing quite where all the enemies are. Pretty decent hit. Decent hit, I killed both of them. <laughs> In further deference to how the game doesn't really mind how you neutralise characters, they're not referred to as deaths, they're referred to as neutralizations by any means. 14, so that got really messy. I still got a B rank for it though. Your rank doesn't substantially suffer. Even if you do do it as messily as possible. I wouldn't mind, but I didn't even show all of it. I didn't call in the support helicopter to make a strafing run against the ground. Uh, what else didn't I do? I didn't pull out any other weapons except like an assault rifle, tranquilizer gun, sniper rifle. There's, there's things like shotguns and, uh, and light machine guns. And that machine, that massive cannon on the side of the helicopter, you can take control of that. Not that you have much to shoot it out most of the time. And you get things like, if, you're, uh, if your intel team levels up, you get things like weather reports. So you get alerted when there's a sandstorm coming towards you. And you get things like enemy positions. Not precisely given away, but you get like a zone on the radar. So it gives you an idea as to the dispersion of enemy forces. Especially how many there are. So it's... It's well worth trying to power up all the different teams because it only makes it easier. Which is a good thing because the enemies start getting nasty after a while. They, there's more of them. The locations start getting more intricate. There's things like cameras and you've got to be careful of all their security just 
it, it just it, it, it just gets harder as you might expect but you can still approach it from any how you want more or less it's a it's a bloody good game i still think it's the best game they ever made i know i'm i'm a no i'm a sucker for open world games but i just love the way you can do it how you want rather than how it wants you to do it i like that about it which is why it's the best okay i've yammered on enough now i think like dislike comment subscribe and share all that jazz see you next time